Hello everyone, I'm Carly and today I'm going to be covering automation and analysis within ArcGIS Pro. Before we begin, I want to let you know that I'm going to be focusing on the functionality available at Pro version 2.5. If you're using a version of Pro prior to this, you might not be able to see all the functionality I'm about to discuss. I'm going to start my presentation by looking at the latest methods of automation within ArcGIS Pro, such as scheduling and also looking at the new functionality available within Model Builder. I will then move on to look at some of the latest analysis tools in ArcGIS Pro, such as ArcGIS Notebooks. So let's start with looking at automation. When we talk about automation in ArcGIS Pro, we mean the ability for geoprocessing tools and other processes to run without any manual user input. This means that tasks can be performed quicker as parameterization does not need to be remembered each time. But more importantly, this frees up time for the end user to be able to perform the more innovative GIS and the GIS that actually helps their job proceed, helps them proceed more further with their job. To look at automation, we're going to start looking at scheduling tools within ArcGIS Pro. Here I have a Pro project. As you can see, I've got a boundaries dataset and overlaying that, I've got a dataset called OS Green Spaces. This is a dataset provided by the Audience Survey and is available within our ArcGIS Living Atlas, which means it's freely available to all users. If I zoom in, you can look at the level of detail of all these green spaces that are available across Great Britain. Now, for this example, I want to perform some analysis on this data. What I want to do so I want to see how many of these green spaces overlap with the tool count overlapping features. I've inputted the data set, I've given the output a name, and I've even parameterized it with a minimum overlap count. Now normally what we would do is just select run and the tool would run and an output would be created. However, instead I'm going to go to the drop down here and I'm going to select the item here, which is schedule. This opens a brand new tab and it allows me to give a name and to start a schedule. For example, I want the schedule to occur every two weeks on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. I can also decide how long I want this schedule to run for. I can then select schedule. Now, as you can see down here, the schedule has been created. This can actually be done for any of your geoprocessing tools that we offer within ArcGIS Pro. So you can have multiple tools all running concurrently to each other, but you don't even need to have ArcGIS Pro open for those tools to run. However, what happens if you have loads of tools and you want to be able to manage them? Luckily, there is a central repository where you can check all your schedules and you can edit, pause or remove them. If you go to the analysis tab and go to your history, firstly, you can see a history of all your sub your geoprocessing tools. Next to that, you can see up here, you've got your history and then you've got the scheduled tools. When you select that, you can see that here is the schedule that I created earlier. You can see its name. Here you can see how many times that schedule has run. You can then edit your schedule. So I can have this occur every one week instead and update. I can pause my schedule if the machine I'm on um, is particularly needs the resource that would have been spent on this tool on something else. And I can also remove that schedule. This is a really useful way to have a central repository for all your schedules and so you can manage all of them from one place. So now I've looked at scheduling just one tool at a time. How can we look at automating a, a whole process of tools? This is where I want to go on to talk about Model Builder. Now hopefully a lot of people already know what Model Builder is, but for those that don't, Model Builder is the ability to um, insert multiple tools into a, a flowchart like process where you can link them up and then you can save them as a tool to run at a later date. Here is an example of a staging environment for Model Builder that I've already created. You drag all the inputs, outputs and processes in here and you link them all up and then you can save them as a tool in an, an extra toolbox. But that in itself is a fantastic method of, of automation as it means long processes don't need to be remembered and you can have them saved here as a tool and you can have that tool shared with other users and used again and again. However, there's something new now which helps with the creation of models in the first place and helps automate that creation. You can now create models based on your geoprocessing tool history. 
As long as you take tools that follow each other in terms of um, the, the, using the same data sets, it'll be able to automatically link up your tools together and automatically create the model that you're looking for. So for example, if I select layer by attribute tool, and I also select the summary statistics tool, and you can see the other two tools are selected in between. And if I drag them here, you will see in a second that the entire geo um, model has been created automatically. You can see the net, the input data sets. You can see the geo database that the output is going to be saved to. And you can also see the output names for those um, end results. And I can then save that. And as you can see, I've automatically in about two minutes created my model that I can save and use. Furthermore, if I go to my catalog, and here you can see the model build example here, which is the same one. Here you can see it's in the toolboxes. If I double click on that, I've actually not got any parameters yet and I can highlight them. But what I can do then is just click run here and you can see that's how easy it is to run the tool. However, what I also want to talk about is that you can actually combine automation methods. So here you can also see the drop down here is to be able to schedule this model building process to, and now a tool. So you can actually take your models and you can actually have them run automatically as well, removing the need for a lot of repetitive and manual tasks to be done by an individual on a consistent basis. So hopefully this has given you a great idea into the flavour of the types of automation that we offer. I now want to look more at the analysis. So mentioned before, ArcGIS Pro 2.5 comes equipped with lots of new upgrades and tools for analysis. The first one I want to quickly mention is the Count Overlapping Features tool, which is a brand new tool for version 2.5. I've actually already gone into this with you guys when I was showing you the, sh the scheduling um, example, but just to reiterate, this feature takes point line or polygon data and is able to tell you a if tool if uh, features within that data set overlap, but also by how many features does that overlap. This is really important in looking at things such as site suitability, but also looking at things such as coverage and whether if there's any gaps geographically with um, coverage of uh, a service. I then want to now look at the business analyst tool set within ArcGIS Pro. There's been a plethora of new tools that come within the business analyst um, tool set, but I'm not going to just list all these off. I just want to give you a flavour of what these tools can offer, as all these tools promote new workflows. One workflow is that the Evaluate Site workflow has been improved massively with these new tools, which means the um, tools is now more accurate at understanding the um, constraints and necessities of um, a, new, a new site would need, which ensures that your uh, territory analysis is more accurate. Furthermore, there's also a new workflow for target marketing. This is the workflow that's able to understand demographic data the best, so you can understand exactly what types of individuals situate or live where, and it also helps you as an end user understand where you should be targeting your uh, energy towards gaining new customer, customer bases. Finally, Business Analyst now has the ability to share your territory solutions, as you can see in these screenshots here, within ArcGIS Online. This means that you can then sh now share these results, not only across your organisation, but publicly if you so wish to. I also want to talk about the GeoAnalytics desktop toolbox. There's been a plethora of new tools here, and I've listed them below, known as Finding Dwell Locations. Describe data sets, generalize linear regression, and forest based classification and regression. Now, some of these tools you might have already seen within ArcGIS Pro, but to let you know that this toolbox specializes these tools to be able to work with uh, what we refer to as big data. So, having these tools in here means that you can now use um, any big data that you have and and perform some really powerful analysis that helps either with um, object detection, that can help with classification, or can help with the prediction of features across a landscape. So now we've covered some of these new tools, I want to now spend a bit of time focusing on ArcGIS Notebooks, a new feature within ArcGIS Pro. Now, some people might be aware that ArcGIS Notebooks already exists in our platform within ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise. However, now this feature has now been brought in to work within ArcGIS Pro. For those that don't know, ArcGIS Notebooks allows users to create Python scripts between, within the Jupyter scripting environment.
The Stupid Scripting environment is some open source software that is able to combine cells of live Python code with narrative text and visualizations all in one document. This enables users to be able to structure their code more effectively as they can block out specifically bits of code performing certain parts of analysis. But it also allows for better collaboration as users can now block out the specific bits of code they're working on and they can test to make sure their bit of code work is working okay. So let's take a look at it, shall we? And we go back to the map and to create a new notebook, you go to insert and you select here new notebook. This gives you then the option to save your notebook in your file space. Here you can see there's already a notebook that I've created and the file type is IPYNB, which stands for Python notebook. What's great about this file type here is that you can then manually upload that to ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise in, into your cloud um, infrastructure so you can share that with other users across the platform. Once you have a new notebook, it will open a tab and then you can start filling in your code, which looks something like this. I've already preemptively filled in this um, notebook with some code just so you can see what it looks like. Here you can see each of these little boxes. These are the cells that were mentioned. Now, you can these cells can be as big or small as you want them to be, which means you can separate your code into as many different sections as you want to. What you do when you have all these different sections is that you can select the run icon here, and this run icon will tell you if the code within that cell is correct. And if it's correct, like so, it'll move on to the next box, and you can run through as so. And then once you get to analysis, it will not only just say if the code is correct, but it'll run the analysis and give you an output, as you can see I've already done here. However, if the code is wrong, you will automatically get an incorrect message when you run the code. So I'm going to show you now. I'm going to just not define my layer, and I'm going to try running this again. As you can see, I got a name error, and it explained to me that OS Green Spaces is not defined. If I then add the quotations back in again and run it, the error disappears. There's lots of ways you can incorporate code within ArcGIS Notebooks. As you can see, I've imported the ArcPy modules, but I've also imported the Python API within the ArcGIS platform as well. So I've been able to link this up to my um, accounts within my ArcGIS Online account I've signed in for. Furthermore, there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts that are available within Jupyter Notebooks, which um, speeds up the process of creating um, highly complex code. Now, I, for those that already know all these shortcuts, I'd like to let you know that this is already available within the ArcGIS Notebooks within Pro. But for those that don't know, I just want to go through a couple of neat examples. For example, when we get down to the ArcPy analysis um, cell here, if I just put my icon next to analysis and I select the tab, it gives me a list of all the tools that I can use within my ArcPy analysis. This is really useful if you're a user that's creating code but you can't quite remember what the tool is called. You can, you can check that here. Furthermore, after I've chosen the Summarize Within tool, I may not be sure quite what the parameters are. If I then select Shift and Tab, you can see that this new icon comes up which lists all of the um, inputs and outputs and other parameters that I need for this tool to work. And I can also select the arrow here to look at the entire doc string, which gives me information on what the tool does and all of what the correct inputs and outputs and parameters are. So just to clarify, this is a notebook for Python code only. This is not something that is compatible with R code or C sharp, but I'd like to um, point out with R code that we do have the R bridge extension within the platform if you would like to also use some R code. And at this moment in time, magic and shell commands, which is the exclamation and percent signs, are currently not supported when running a notebooks in ArcGIS Pro. But hopefully, even with those limitations, you can still see just how powerful it is to be able to create notebooks like this that can not only take layers already within an ArcGIS Pro project, as you can see here, but also then you can share this with multiple users within the cl your cloud infrastructure or not. 
So I want to thank you all for listening today. Hopefully you've now been able to understand how you can speed up your day-to-day -day tasks with scheduling. And hopefully now you can understand how you can use Model Builder to standardize longer processes, but also how you can automate the creation of these processes within the Create Tools from History functionality. Finally, hopefully you've got just a bit of a flavor in how you can integrate more complex analysis with your code into ArcGIS Pro projects using ArcGIS Notebooks. Thank you for listening and have a lovely day.